Thor Love and Thunder, out in theaters, the fourth solo film for the character in the MCU, which makes him the character with the most solo outings so far. Uh, directed once again by Taika Waititi, who returns to the franchise after the enormous success of Thor Ragnarok. Uh, starring, of course, Chris Hemsworth, Natalie Portman, Christian Bale, Tessa Thompson, Taika Waititi himself, Russell Crowe, and a sort of extended cameo from the cast of Guardians of the Galaxy. Pratt, Gillan, Bautista, Clementine Gunn, and the voices of Vin Diesel and Bradley Cooper. Now, without spoiling anything that wasn't in the trailers, the story picks up after Avengers Endgame with Thor joining the Guardians for some adventures in space, during which he sort of closes himself off to, to love and to relationships as a coping mechanism after all the loss he endured uh, over the course of the previous films and becomes essentially just this mindless warrior that fights for the sake of fighting. But then two important things happen, each of them adapted from a separate popular comic book run uh, about Thor. One of them is that Gore, a vengeful dude with uh, a powerful weapon called Necrosword, is going around murdering gods and Asgardians are next on his hit list. And he obviously needs to be stopped. And two, Another person dressed like Thor and wielding his actual reform, reformed hammer, uh, Mjolnir, shows up in New Asgard, and it turns out to be Jane Foster. How she got her powers, how is the hammer complete again, what is going on, uh, the answers to those questions and more will be revealed over the course of the film as Thor and Jane reconnect. That's as much as I'm saying so as not to spoil the fun, and speaking of fun, there's plenty of it in the film. Uh, once again, like in Ragnarok, the movie is dominated by humor. Humor in many shapes and forms. Character interactions between Thor and Jane, Thor and Korg, and many others. Um, simple and ridiculous stuff like the giant goats that scream at the top of their lungs every single time they're on the screen. Callbacks to old storylines, even so far as the Team Thor promotional videos from back around Civil War, with the character of Daryl even showing up himself. There's things like the jealousy uh, between Thor's weapons, which sounds ridiculous, but the film really makes it work. Um, I think it manages to sort of sell me on the idea of romance between Thor and Jane retroactively much better than the two films in which uh, Jane previously appeared, Thor 1 and Thor 2. I think they, the characters never had any chemistry in those films, um, quite frankly, and, and this film goes into this sort of extended flashback montage of their relationship and that's very funnily done and it, it suddenly makes me believe yeah that they could work that that could happen and you know for the most part the humor in general just just works I think uh, Love and Thunder feels like a light-hearted 1980s adventure romp uh, set to the tune of Guns N' Roses that doesn't take itself too seriously and it's like a roller coaster ride more than anything else uh, and that feeling is further accentuated by the extremely lively color palette, just full of flair and, and, and life. And that, by the way, leads to a very interesting thing um, with cinematography, which is that at one point the heroes confront Gore in a sort of shadow realm, a planet which is entirely black and white. And that is a fantastic contrast to the rest of the film, where suddenly all that color is washed out. Um, I like the themes of the film, which revolve allow, uh, around sort of allowing yourself to love and to be loved, and instead of going around through life feeling nothing. Uh, and in that sense, the, the way Gore is written makes him kind of mirror Thor's journey, and putting them together as a sort of mirrored versions of, of themselves. Uh, there's a lot of focus on kids in the film, which, to my own surprise, I didn't mind. Uh, on the contrary, I, I think the movie really finds its heart in the scenes with those kids involved. Now, I will say this, there are flaws to the film, uh, which become apparent if you give it some thought. I think it has some pacing issues, especially in the middle, where it could have used additional 15, maybe even 20 minutes or so to, to help the movie breathe. Um, partly to, to have Thor maybe explore his past trauma a little bit more, partly to develop um, Valkyrie, which sh it feels like there was some sort of subplot going on for her, but maybe some scenes were cut because it ends up going nowhere. Um, and also I would have loved uh, to, 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 for the film to give us more gore, because as good as, and entertaining as Christian Bale is in the film, there's not a lot of him. Um, and particularly there is very little actual god butchering and I would love to see I would love to have, to have seen a montage or just a scene in the middle where he 
demolishes some gods on screen for us to see to establish him as this really scary threat. Uh, I did also think there's a little too much uh, Korg and his humor and would have loved to see this aspect toned down just a little bit. There are some weird editing choices, there's also a problem where some character death fakeouts uh, occur which I'm generally not a fan of in films. Either kill someone or don't, um, preferably do to raise the stakes, but if you pretend to do it and then they're fine every single time it sort of makes it feel like they're not in any danger after all. Uh, but even with all those imperfections and flaws, I, I just really enjoyed myself. Uh, I thought the film was a fun adventure, uh, not too serious, not too monumental in, when it comes to pushing the narrative of the MCU as a whole. But I think it doesn't need to be. Uh, it's fine if it's just a self-contained adventure. And I will say that the ending is one of my favorite in all favorites in all of Marvel. Um, I thought it was extremely sweet and touching and the sort of reveal slash explanation of the subtitle Love and Thunder uh, that the movie pulls at the very end is, is just incredible. So yeah, you can criticize the film and for several things and justifiably so, uh, there, there's reason to do so. But at the end of the day, I think even despite those flaws, it achieves what it sets out to achieve and ends up being great 